When I put that first Hogwarts Legacy trailer up on our big old 4K TV, my girlfriend didn't just look up from her phone, she actually put it down. She was wrapped with attention all the way through the trailer, just like I was. And at the end, she had tears in her eyes, just like I did. If you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know that my girlfriend isn't a gamer. If it's not Mario Kart or Angry Birds, then she doesn't really want to know. But the trailer, that's right, the trailer, captured the feel of the Wizarding World so perfectly, so powerfully, that it blew our minds and our hearts. And this is something that happened again and again when I was finally able to play the game, and even more shockingly so, when my girlfriend played it too. One of the first things my girlfriend and I ever bonded over was our love for Harry Potter. We have both read and reread the book so many times, and our attachment to the Wizarding World is profound. Hogwarts Legacy was the highest selling video game of 2023, a year in which we got so many S rank AAA video games that the release schedule was basically this. So my guess is a lot of other fans still feel the same about the Wizarding World. At first I was a little wary about going back to Hogwarts Legacy for this video. It took a lot of work to get the Platinum, not to mention three other partial playthroughs for each of the school houses. But the second that title music kicked in, I was drawn straight back in. My four characters were all still there on the loading screen, with so much activity going on behind them. My 100% Ravenclaw boy even had a freaking Eren pet walking around in the background. Because that is the level of love and heart that went into making this game. Right away, you know that the people responsible for this game really appreciate the source material. Every second of Hogwarts Legacy feels exactly as it should, and this is when I remember that starting three additional partial playthroughs did not feel like work. I was so excited to see the different common rooms, and as I soon found out, each house has some unique quests too. I mean, Gryffindor was bottom of the list for me, but you get to take part in the Headless Hunt, and I never would have pegged Hufflepuff as the house that visits Azkaban. I loaded up my 100% character to get reacquainted with the game, and I see all the challenges I completed, and all the collectibles that I found. I have a quick run around the school, and as the familiar feelings of wonder and potential return to me as I get lost in the world all over again, I remember that none of this was a chore. I always felt hungry for whatever I was going to discover next, and I had so much fun unlocking everything. I consistently played this game well past midnight, and as a 40 year old with a full time job, let me tell you, it takes something very special to make me lose track of time and forget to go to bed at a reasonable hour. But my time in Hogwarts kept on resulting in a very real need for Starbucks the next day. Extraordinary. <laughs> So I bit the magical bullet. I made a new character, and after loving every note and every pixel of that perfect character creation music, the story once again got its dragon claws in me. Within seconds. It didn't matter that I already knew what was going to happen, it is all done so perfectly that I was sucked straight back in. Remember in the new Matrix film, where Barney explains that manipulating what people believe is so much easier than trying to control people with facts? Putting aside the damning indictment of our society today for a moment, he's 100% right, because connecting with people is all about what they feel. You can always tell when a piece of art has been made by people that have love for it. If it can make you feel something, then it's got a much better chance of creating an attachment with you. Hogwarts Legacy knows this. We the gaming public might not have known exactly what we wanted from a modern Wizarding World game, but the good people over at Portkey Games did, because they are all clearly massive fans too. The love they have for the source material is evident in every frame of this game. You know the saying that if you can find a way to get paid for doing what you love, you'll never work a day in your life? Well these guys clearly loved making this game, though obviously they did work their asses off to make it too, I appreciate that. But the wizarding faculty would definitely give them all an outstanding for sure.
So let's get into some real detail here. Aside from nailing the look and the feel, what else does Hogwarts Legacy actually do? Well straight away you have a breakneck paced introductory section that takes you through multiple locations via portkey, that introduces you to magical puzzles and combat, and thrusts you headfirst into a magical mystery, brought to life with stunning style, very reminiscent of what we had in the later Potter films, but definitely more on the colourful side. Your introduction to everyday life as a student is done with the perfect blend of intrigue and possibilities, with more than a hint of potential mischief. Everything seems so playful and welcoming, but there's a constant tease of so much more hiding just out of view. I cannot overstate how massive Hogwarts Castle is, and how easy it is to get lost, and before long you have Hogsmeade and the Forbidden Forest and the surrounding countryside too. Remember how Elden Ring's map was such a massive troll? because it kept on revealing more and more huge areas? Yeah, it's like that. Fortunately, you have an excellent story MacGuffin to help you keep track of things, and for fast travel and guiding you where you need to go. The pacing is once again handled spectacularly. There was so much potential to be overwhelmed here, especially for a game that moves at such a brisk pace, but the steady introduction of students, teachers, spells and activities is spread out over different areas that help you find your feet in such a massive world. Within a couple of hours you'll feel very comfortable here, and you'll have likely wandered around extensively of your own accord, because every inch of this world is just begging to be discovered. Actually using magic, both in and out of combat, is so snappy and satisfying. You get access to a dizzying amount of spells, each one distinct enough to stand out on its own, and thanks to a helpful colour coding system in combat, Learning which spells are needed for different situations becomes a complete reflex. If you ever used to wonder how the wizards kept all of these spells in their brain, Hogwarts Legacy won't just tell you, it will show you. Roll credits and you will instinctively know your defenders from your Akios. Bombarda. Some of the people you meet as you roam the corridors have cheeky side quests for you to do, ranging from cool stuff like a dueling club, to the more standard fetch quest. Except here, you fetch with Akio, so it's actually fun. There are puzzles galore around the world and a staggering amount of customization options. Again, to really hammer it home that this is your character and your experience. Some students have multi-part story quests that aren't technically part of the critical story path, but truly excellent all the same. A real standout for me is the one that gives you the opportunity to learn unforgivable curses. It's morally grey from start to finish, and it really does make you question what you would do if you were in the same situation. No mention of side activities will be complete without mentioning the room of requirement. You can lose hours upon hours customising this room to your heart's content. With so many designs out there to find, and so many useful utilities such as potion and herbology stations, but nothing, and I mean nothing, can compare to your vivariums. Remember in Fantastic Beasts, how Newt had the animal sanctuary inside his suitcase? It's that, but you get four of them, and you can capture and breed magical creatures, and you can feed them, brush them, and play with them. We're talking baby nifflers here guys, the level of cute is borderline unbearable. Are there games out there better made than Hogwarts Legacy? Yes, obviously. Put it next to something like God of War or The Last of Us and there's a huge difference. But Hogwarts Legacy doesn't just give us the wizarding world we always wanted, it truly lets us live in it. If you've ever imagined doing something in the wizarding world, the chances are Hogwarts Legacy will let you do it. Everything is executed with a style and finesse that is perfectly befitting of the source material. Hogwarts Legacy makes you feel like a fifth year witch or wizard in training, that also just so happens to get involved in crazy adventures that they really shouldn't at that age. Whether you're taking on illegal poacher gangs, unravelling ancient mysteries, or recreating everybody's favourite hippogriff moment from Prisoner of Azkaban, Hogwarts Legacy will pour a big old vat of amortensia over your heart, and you won't be interested in Slughorn's cure. And there you have it my fellow witches and wizards. This has been my view on why Hogwarts Legacy is so gosh darn magical. As always these are just my opinions, and I would genuinely love to hear yours down in those comments. 
Oh, and I absolutely insist that you start your comment with whichever house you're in. No wrong answers here, guys. We're all part of the same magical family. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a like, and maybe even subscribing to my channel for more gaming content. I'm on the socials too if you're into that sort of thing, or if you're just curious to see pics of my collection and my setup, and obviously my cat, incidentally named Tonks. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are amazing. See you on the next one.